everyone, what's up? It's Ella and I'm back with another video today. Today I am doing a drawing based on our A to Z flower prompts with today's prompt being begonia. So um, I had a lot of fun with this as I always do. I don't think that I've done a challenge yet where I haven't really enjoyed myself. Again, I wanted to try something different, always trying to keep things spicy and unique. And I haven't drawn a lot of animals recently, so I thought it would be cute to draw a little fox with a little flower crown of begonias. I don't know what exactly prompted this idea, just something about drawing a little cartoony animal with flowers on its head just seemed very springish. I thought about doing a rabbit at first, but then I was like, oh, I don't know. I really like foxes. I, I tend to like um, more like uh, bigger, I guess, predatory animals, which is like a weird way to phrase it, but like I like wolves and like hawks and all kinds of uh, just cool, cool animals. Um, it starts out, I think, initially looking more like a cat, but I think that I fix it then with the face, trying to make the muzzle look like it actually sticks out further and it's a bit more angular. It's difficult, especially one with the view that I was doing and then two with keeping it in a cartoony style. You don't want to be too overly detailed uh, with the anatomy. So you can see here, initially I did like um, a very simple sketch, not, not very well done at all, just to kind of get a mock-up of the color. I'm trying to do better about planning ahead with my colors because I saw that that was something that um, I really struggled with as far as color schemes. So I think that, that turned out better. You also see, so I do the initial sketch where I do a mock-up of the color, and then I do a sketch where I kind of redesign the character. And then I go in and I do another more refined sketch of that. And then I go over and I do the line art. So I do a lot of drawing in this video, which might, I don't know, might bore the heck out of some of you, but I think that it's really fun always to see time-lapse drawings and get to go back and look at like, oh, I can't believe that I was gonna leave it look like that. I'm so glad I fixed it. I'm so glad I changed it, you know, that kind of stuff. So yeah, you can see here the face was giving me some problems. I wanted to make a character that looked unique to myself, so I was trying to steer away from looking at reference images of cartoon cats, I'm sorry, foxes. It just looks so much like a cat. Um, even though in my head I kind of had an image of Todd from Fox and the Hound, which is an absolutely adorable movie that I need to watch again. And I watched it, I think, two-ish years ago, something like that. And I didn't realize how many sad moments there were in that movie, too. Like, as a kid, some of that stuff just didn't stick out to me as much as it does now that I'm older. But when the woman, whose name I forget, which is so terrible, has to drop Todd off in the forest, and he just looks so confused and sad, it's just, oh, it, it just gets you in the heart a little bit, it gets you in the feels. So I'm glad that that movie turned out happy. I also really liked the sequel, prequel kind of thing that they did when the two were still young and Copper joined like a little doggy singing group. It was very silly, but also really cute, and I felt like the characters in that movie were actually decent considering it was a Disney sequel, and especially during that time, Disney sequels were not all that great. So you can see now I'm going in to do like the final line work and I kind of changed up the eyes a little bit. I wanted to give a bit more of like a slanted look to the eyes because I feel like foxes kind of have that like clever sly look on their face and having more angular eyes I think helped with that. You can also see I'm going to adjust the muzzle a couple times until I get something right and then I also added a little tooth poking out from the mouth because I don't know I just felt like it would help with the idea that it's a fox and I, th I thought it looked cute. I used to draw a lot of animals, like all the time, like honestly all the time, uh, mostly cats, but sometimes like dogs and rabbits and other stuff. And then, like I, I didn't understand how to draw people at all during that time, and then I got my hands on some like how to draw people books, mostly, <laughs> mostly like manga style stuff. Um, and then after that, I pretty much only drew people to the point where I kind of forgot how to draw animals again. So this is something that I should probably work on some more, and hopefully you guys will see some more of that. Maybe next time I'll draw that little bunny with flowers on its head or something. Except I wouldn't do that because that'd be too similar, but something like that. 
Uh, while I have you here, I'm also excited that Mermaid is coming up. If you're someone who likes to draw, I would definitely recommend checking that out. I'm planning on doing a drawing a day, at least that's my hope, and then posting all of those to my Instagram, and maybe I'll do some kind of time-lapse compilation of everything to post, I don't know, in late May or uh, beginning of June. Probably on one of the Wednesday days when Emily and I are kind of switching off and doing our own thing. Speaking of which, you should definitely keep an eye out for what Emily's going to post on Wednesday. I'm super excited to see it, but I'm not going to spoil what it is. Keep it a surprise. So yeah, now you can see I'm going in with the color, and I really like the color schemes with this. I figured out that there's something really cool on Procreate called Harmony, where you can have the color wheel up, right? And it will actually show you the exact opposite color on the color wheel from the color you have, including... Um, like saturation and um what's the word I'm looking for like the the grayscale basically uh, which I thought is really really cool and really helpful so I tried doing that with this where I picked a green that was very much uh, on that spectrum of the harmony the actual harmony that they came up with was more of a blue color but I like kind of smudged it over a little bit until I got a nice green so yeah, I think that that really helped make everything pop a little bit more. Yeah, I'm kind of running out of things to say with this one. I like it. Um, not too, too much else to go on with. I mean, it's just a fox. It's cute. It's cute. And it was fun. And it was kind of a nice break from doing some more serious stuff that I've been doing for my art class for school. We've been having some serious prompts to do. So this was kind of a nice, fun little side project. So yeah, I think that that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and you like my little fox. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hey everyone, it's Emily, and for this week's flower prompt, I decided that I wanted to focus on the character and the environment to tell a story. I recently just got the book The Art of Miyazaki's Spirited Away, so I thought it would be a good idea to use some of the learnings that I found in there to make a piece. His artworks focus equally on the character and the environment. His environment isn't just an environment. It has meaning to him and to the character's story. So I think it would be really cool if I use the environment for this story and then I continued it into other drawings. Not necessarily the other flower prompts, but maybe the style battles or my personal video that comes out Wednesday. You should definitely check that out. I'm looking to do a paint with me, so it's going to be new and hopefully fun for you guys. I have some canvas and watercolor that I need to get rid of, so we'll see what I decide on doing. For this piece, I wanted to experiment with the different brushes that are available in my drawing platform. I use Krita, by the way. I've been mentioning it down in the description below. Ella uses Procreate. I use Krita. I believe Procreate is only for Apple products, but Krita you can get on several different platforms and it's free to use. It's basically exactly like uh, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, so that's really cool. I definitely recommend it if you're on a budget and you want to draw digitally. I also use the Parblo art, pla art pad. Yeah, Parblo. It was like $50. It's from, I think, 2009, but it... it gets the job done, so it's always a good choice if you're an artist on a budget. <clears throat> Something that I struggled with for this painting or digital artwork was definitely getting the textures in there. That's why I kind of turned using different brush 
options that they had in the menu. Usually I just use like the airbrush, the q-tip tool, and then the regular pen, maybe the pencil sometimes. But they have like these texture brushes that you can load in. These were preloaded on the platform. And I found some that kind of looked like leaves and that kind of looked like the reflection on the water. So I kind of used those and I think it gave it a cool effect. But I'm not totally sold on using them all the time. I think maybe now it worked okay. But if I go back and look at this piece later, it might look a little bit strange to me. <laughs> but I mean, that's all with improvement, improving and getting better at what you're doing. I also had a lot of trouble with in the beginning. I'm not sure if you guys noticed when you were watching the time lapse. But I couldn't get the face right. There's just something about drawing at that angle. Feminine faces usually don't turn out really good for me. But I tried to get it as best as I could. It's definitely something that I have to work on. I always seem to want to draw all of her features in like a straight line. Instead of making it curved like a regular face is. I think after looking at the reference photo a little bit more. I got closer to what I wanted it to be. But I think it definitely still needs some work. Uh, another key feature to note is the eyes. I had a lot of trouble with the eyelashes because of the weird angle and especially in real life you wouldn't really be able to see the eyelashes if she's that far away but I still wanted to add them in to give a little bit more femininity to the piece but that it's just a note for next time I might not add them in it's kind of just however I'm feeling. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my half of the video today. I'm just going to time lapse the rest of it so that you can see my final product. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you for watching another video on the official Artsy Art YouTube channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, and don't forget to wash your paintbrushes.